Hey there, Karen here with Whiskey Sour, who, despite the hundreds and hundreds of requests he gets every day by email to say something, anything to you guys, uh, will remain silent. I'm sorry. <laughs> I tried my best. He's cute, though. It's just nice to be able to just be cute on film and not have to say anything, right? <laughs> That's why puppies get like, you know, 10 million hits on YouTube. Whistle for 20 seconds and tons of hits. It's amazing. I'm sitting here in Los Angeles. It's uh, raining today. And uh, it used to be very sad when it would rain. Makes me think about my depression. Uh, but I don't feel that way anymore. Now rain makes me miss home. <laughs> uh, I am such a Canadian at heart, really am. I uh, miss the Four Seasons a lot, so I'm thinking about that today, just, you know, the rain and how lovely it is and how cleansing it is, especially in a dirty town like Hollywood. <laughs> you know, you see palm trees and sunshine, but you don't see what you're inhaling every day. The air quality is just horrendous. I wrote a blog today called, Are You Too Sensitive? And this is a topic I've covered before. Um, I might even have a blog somewhere in the last 500 blogs of uh, called Are You Being Too Sensitive or something. Even uh, I couldn't be bothered to look back <laughs> and see if I had a blog title by that name. But uh, I have covered the topic before also in uh, there's a Waiting for Others to Change blog I did. <clears throat> and also Are You Too Invested? Uh, so it's, it's a little bit in those blogs, but I think it's worth looking at again because I had an email this morning where one of the questions uh, this guy asked me was, is there any satisfaction in knowing you're too compassionate and always believe the best in people? And it was regarding someone who he was supporting. Uh, it was a friend's music he said he was supporting. And this guy has snapped at him a few times, uh, just responding in what he felt was a very condescending way. And he had posted up, this guy, this musician, had posted up some video and the the info link wasn't in English, and so, you know, he requested, could you put that in English, and uh, and he got snapped back, uh, you know, and so, um, he, this guy was suggesting, oh, I guess it's only for fans in my country or something, you know, it's just a little bit condescending, and there were some other incidences where he was really short with other people, this guy, and uh, he, and then the guy who emailed me, he said he had drove a lot and spent a lot of money supporting uh him and he really felt that he was hurt uh, seeing as he was always very supportive of him and supporting him and there are kind of two mini topics I want to cover in this uh, are you too sensitive blog today I want to talk about the word supporting and I want to talk about the word expectations because I think these are kind of two relevant words uh, regarding this email I got and the reason I wanted to cover this too is because the email that he gave me I've seen it a lot there was another incident where uh, there was a guy who was supporting a girl uh, in her music and he felt that she wasn't being responsive to him. And so there was, uh, there, it's a topic worth covering again and just being a little bit more specific about those areas. The word supporting, um, this is a topic that I keep meaning to cover seeing as I'm also an artist in the industry and in the public eye. Uh, for anybody who has been around with me long enough, you, you might remember my joke about the underwire bra <laughs> when I think about the word support. Uh, when I hear it, forgive me, that's what I think of. I think of underwire bra. It's support. It's holding something up. Holding somebody up. Uh, I am personally really happy when someone says, uh, I will support you, Karen. That's really cool. And I want you to know that I don't listen to the phrase, I'm not hearing the phrase, I'm hearing what your heart is telling me when you say that. Uh, you have some respect for me or you dig something I'm doing or whatever, and that's awesome, but I want you guys to know that I feel that kind of love. But the reason I'm not a big fan of the phrase, I will support you, uh, is because when artists have the support of a fan base, which you guys know I'm also not a fan of the word fan, <laughs> even though I just said it, uh, it's it's just a little bit like we're on a different level, you and I. It's just, it's not, um, I don't know. I, I've, I always consider all my people in my community my friends, so I don't even use the word fan either. It ditches that kind of stupid hierarchy that's in there anyway, but I think there's, uh, when, when, uh, when artists have the support, like he's saying, 
of a fan base or even of friends, uh, there's a danger that a codependent relationship can transpire. And I could do a whole topic on codependence, but I personally released the music from being part of that. And artists, I always encourage artists to release their art from being part of a codependent relationship. Um, I make my living working and you'll never hear me thank anyone for their support. That might make me sound mean. I, I don't regurgitate phrases like, oh, I couldn't do this without you guys. You know, oh, I can't make my living without you guys. Uh, I don't say that because to me that phrase isn't true. Sorry to say that to you, but uh, I've made music for years without anyone. The problem is that some artists will come into the industry and uh, their, their whole music is propped up by what people think of them. And they didn't really make music before that. They just, you know, do it as a way to be uh, propped up by others. And for me, I have made music for many, many years before I ever shared it with anybody. So to me, I can make music without anybody. <laughs> you know, I just, I can. And, um, and I make music and then I share it. I, I, anybody who wants to listen happily, I will share it. But I'm sorry to say I'm not one of those artists who will thank the fans, a word I don't like, for their support, also a word I don't like. Uh, I have supported myself for years. I've made music for years. What this does, now before you think I'm all snobby over here, it's actually quite the opposite. What it does is it frees me from becoming indebted to people. Uh, and it also frees the people who purchase the music, that they don't feel like they have to pressure uh, the pressure of having to support me by buying t-shirts and posters and all these kinds of things. It's like if people want that stuff, it's great, but there shouldn't be um, a feeling of being indebted to somebody or that you have to prop someone up or support them. And uh, to me, it frees, it frees me from becoming indebted to people. It frees the music, uh, the people who buy the music from having to purchase everything I put out. But most importantly, it frees the music from having to make money and then consequently turning it into some marketable bubblegum crap. Nothing pains me more in the whole world than to see music prostituted or art prostituted. And so I, I hate that. Uh, I make music and then I share it for those who want to f hear it. But I feel like the music has something to offer too. Uh, so to me, if somebody purchases uh, a CD from me. I feel like I've put lots of work into that and I, I sell it to somebody and the money comes back and we each have something from that. I don't feel like there's favors going on and I don't feel like there's support going on. I feel like we both had something uh, that helped each other. And I feel like uh, the music has something to offer. So it's not a case of me being in debt to someone who buys it. So that's how I feel about the word support. And that's how I feel about the word supporting. Just as, as plain as I can say it. <clears throat> now, uh, uh, another context of the word support, which I do love, is I believe friends offer love and support to one another, and it's not always even like that, like a CD sale, like is, is even like that. Uh, I, I think true love and support shouldn't come with expectations. So if somebody's really hurting or really down and you're offering support to lift them up, they might not give you anything back. There, it's not a CD sale. <laughs> So uh, it's, uh, to me, I love when I see friends selflessly uh, offering their love and support to, to friends and people. Um, but it shouldn't come with those expectations. That's, that's the big key there. So expectations, that's the other word <laughs> that I want to cover. Do you remember me saying that when we have expectations of other people, we will be disappointed? That was a phrase that I had learned uh, and probably one of the only really good phrases I've ever learned from a therapist and I encounter this almost daily and I guess I've just learned to allow them to allow people to have their journey and let go of any responsibility of control. Uh, if I'm waiting for them to react a certain way or act a certain way or get something back from them, uh, it, it's, a, it's a bit controlling where I feel like I have to control their, uh, their next move. Um, game of chess doesn't work like that. Uh, everyone has problems complications and history and most of those uh, we don't see just based on one or two sentences that somebody says so with this guy that emailed me when he got some sentences back from this artist uh, it's hard to really evaluate what that guy's problems are what his complications are and what his history is just based on a few sentences from him 
and most of those uh, we 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 can't possibly see just from a simple email back or even a simple response back from somebody. Uh, in the music industry specifically, because this is what this guy's talking about, um, there's a danger of ego taking over, and so artists will recite music industry phrases that just make them seem a little bit more rock star, you know. <laughs> You don't get any less rock star sitting on a bed with your <laughs> with your uh, whiskey sour or stuffed animal. Uh, I do recognize the rock star phrases that kind of get thrown out there. Check out my music. That's my most hated uh, phrase that I hear from people. Check it out. Check it out. You know, like I always say, it's a supermarket checkout. Um, Thanks for your support is another one. Uh, that it's. Uh, if somebody comes to your door with a UNICEF box at Halloween and you chuck a penny in there and somebody says thanks for your support, that's awesome because you really are supporting their cause. You know, you get you get you know the warm fuzzy feelings back from it, but that's what support means. And um, and artists will any regurgitate anything that has to do with iTunes, MySpace, Facebook, YouTube, Reverb Nation. It's all check out my music and thanks for your support. Basically, that's kind of the regurgitated phrases that a lot of uh, rock stars will will use in their rock stardom. <laughs> uh, many artists is, uh, uh, that I've run into, and unfortunately, I mean, I'm in kind of the heartland of it all here in Hollywood, Los Angeles area, but uh, a lot of them have a sense of entitlement, and I've talked to you guys about that. You know, we had some incidences with the public record where some of the artists we have on there have a sense of entitlement because they think they've worked harder than anyone uh, out there, so it makes them eligible to unload and unleash uh, these snobby phrases to their listeners. And as a music listener, I really want the people I love to be really cool. But I don't want to know if, say, Ian Gillen, who I think is awesome from Deep Purple, I really don't want to know if he's a jerk. Because I just love Deep Purple and that would be disappointing to me. So I don't put that on Ian, you know. I don't put these expectations on him that he has to be an awesome person, because chances are uh, when somebody makes really moody music, they're not necessarily awesome all the time. And uh, there can be an expectation that Ian uh, should be cool because his music is cool. And the truth is that Ian's a person, and I shouldn't worry about how cool he is or if he appreciates me or my support or anything like that. Ian asked me for it. He's just making music and sharing, you know. He recorded some songs because he wanted to. And if I get something from his music, it doesn't matter if he's a jerk. Like. But somewhere along the line, we decided that the artist has to live up to the expectation of how their song makes us feel. And music does this to us. And music and art can really attack our sensitivities that way. Uh, the uh, one other thing I want to bring up uh, in this particular person's case is he had asked me uh, if he was being too sensitive, which is what uh, spurred the title of the blog. Uh, there's something really outstanding to me about being sensitive in a desensitized uh, society. So I don't think it's a bad trait, uh, but I don't suspect that that's what the problem is here. I think uh, this transpired with this guy and then he felt like he was maybe taking it too personally or being too sensitive, which there could be some truth to that, but I don't suspect that's a problem. I think maybe it's a, more of a case like he truly felt like he was supporting this artist, felt invested in him, which you guys, uh, I, if you go back some blogs you'll see I did a whole thing saying are you too invested. Uh, as an artist and a friend, and therefore he had some expectations that he would be treated better. Uh, our reaction to all of this is where we feel too sensitive, but I believe the feeling of being too sensitive is really just the reaction. We shouldn't be questioning our own heart, we should be questioning our motivation and our own experiences and our own expectations. Uh, I've said many times that it's best for me to do something nice for someone and then run away like it never happened. That way you just go on to do the next thing in life and you don't look back and you don't look back to see if anything came back to you. And it, it doesn't hurt though when you immediately, or sorry, it does hurt when you get something immediately negative back. And we also shouldn't be questioning our hearts then, you know, whether we are too sensitive. It's, we should be questioning our expectations and evaluate what it truly means to show love without anything in return. And the truth is that there's mean people. There's people who are just truly mean, but they might be the ones who just need our unconditional love without us expecting anything uh, in return. So I signed off today. Making music like nobody is listening, spreading love like a chef sprinkles icing sugar on the pancakes. And what I mean by that is he just does it and no patrons in the restaurant come to thank him. 
but that's his job, that's what he does, and, and, you know, at the end of the day, he felt like he made some good pancakes. It's a funny analogy, isn't it? <laughs> I also signed off with a Clive Bell quote, where he says, all sensitive people agree that there is a peculiar emotion provoked by works of art. It happens a lot with music and art, and it, it evokes this, uh, these sensitive emotions in us. So I'll sign off today, and of course, I will tune in with you guys tomorrow. Until next time, for Whiskey Sour Me, <laughs> rock on.